Yeah, you get it. It's Charlie's ZL2 CDM. Just and having a um. Again, so it's not with you know DNA and genes and the flow of information. Just, just playing around with a uh, some yeah. AM modulation experiments using some of those parts yeah. out of the old radio. So uh, just putting that up there. So let me just go back and we'll um, have a look at what I've done and um, and and go from there. Uh, you may recall that I was going to do some initially. I was thinking about what I was going to do for the next project. Um, I will be very shortly starting in on a, uh, a reference, what I'm going to call a reference SSB radio. Uh, but before doing that, I just wanted to have a quick play around with some AM modulation. So what I've done here is I've, I've harvested some parts, uh, and look at the circuit diagram in a sec, to, to make up a, um, uh, a AM transmitter. Uh, just to play around with that big uh, modulating transformer that we saw um, that we saw uh, out of that old radio uh, as well as playing around with some of those um, RF transistors that were also in there they were the uh, the 2N 5643 now that whole radio that this came out of was a 25 watt radio so what I elected to do for the experiments was just to um, make up a power amplifier uh, half that so a, a 10 watt um, amplifier uh, CW uh, and then I've derated that down again in terms of the input drive uh, down to 5 watts to then play around with the AM transmitter. So uh, so the CW is, is 5 watts, so the peak envelope power at a, a modulation index of 100, or max modulation, uh, should be up to that sort of 10 watts peak to peak, or 10 watts peak envelope power. Uh, so that was my logic and thinking around that. Uh, when I now transition to having a play around with that reference SSB rig, it is my intent to uh, redo this amplifier here. I'll uh, use a different copper board. Um, again, go for a push-pull uh, arrangement on the uh, output uh, with the same with a with a 5643 driver, uh, and then, like I say, utilise that for um, gosh, I don't know, um, yeah, 10 watts plus. We'll see what happens. So, in terms of the actual circuit, before I, I come back to this. Uh, let me just zoom out a little bit there. Hopefully you can see that. So, what did I find when I uh, had a look at um, look at that uh, that old Tate uh, radio? For interest sake, the um, the modulation transformer uh, that was that, that big one over here. The secondary windings it had two secondary windings that were being driven. Uh, by a push-pull audio amplifier using 2N6103s. So um, they uh, can take uh, a, a, a collector current of 16 amps, so a reasonable amount there. Um, uh, what I've done here in this particular radio, where I'm using it up here, and I'll come back to this in a sec, uh, is I've just wired those in series uh, and just using one drive for, for that particular circuit. So what I have done right or wrong, again I'm absolutely no expert in any of this, this is just purely me playing around and experimenting uh, and this video here is just purely a video log uh, of, of what I've been doing. So this radio here or this transmitter here is, is what we're seeing here. So on the left hand side in terms of the, the driver down here, that's this uh, 2N5643 um, I decided to set it up to have a quiescent current through it for class AB of 35 milliamps. Uh, so what I did there, uh, with no load on the input, um, I simply adjusted this resistor here, which is hanging off the 13.8 volt line, uh, until I measured a, 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 a quiescent current of 35 milliamps. Uh, and that turned out to be a resistor of 15k ohm. So I started very high, and then I came down, just incremented down, with a um, with a resistor box, tick 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 down until I got my desired current. Um, just elected to put an RFC uh, between the base um, and that um, uh, bias voltage, uh, just to uh, mitigate or to eliminate or to reduce more the point uh, any input RF from leaking back up through there. So I decided to push it all through to uh, that particular transistor. The output transformer there. Um, after I'd made the secondary stage, um, I came back and had a bit of a play around with T1 here. Uh, it's using a BN-43202, so 43 material down here. Um, and I set that up in the end to be a turns ratio of 6 turns to 4 turns, 
uh, provided the, uh, the, the the best match between the two stages um, with the secondary tapped to allow me to um, inject the bias current for uh, the the driver it's not the driver sorry uh, the, the power amplifier over here so um, the other interesting thing is on the collector side um, on the other side of that output transformer um, that does not go to 13.8 volts I've actually configured it the same way as I found uh, in the actual the old radio in which these parts came out of that this particular stage was also connected to the output of the modulation transformer so in this particular case both the driver and the power amplifier are getting modulated uh, VCC um, for their stages not the bias though, I've set the bias is, is fixed but the uh, the output transformer, say again, well the output VCC here um, is modulated so interesting there um, right so the secondary stage uh, class AB push-pull uh, again using the uh, those two uh, 5643's um, they were also in a push-pull configuration uh, out of the old radio um, I did not have a circuit diagram so I managed to sort of just look back to see how it was configured uh, but I have no idea what the um, the quiescent current was or, or anything like that. I don't have any any data at all on the particular radio. What I elected to do in the end, so over here in terms of the bias, uh, that's that centre tapped transformer here. Uh, coming up again through another RFC just to eliminate any chance of, of RF finding its way into uh, the VCC line. Um, I've gone for a very simple, um, it's not ideal, but it's, it's well, I don't want to say quick and dirty, but it's a... A simple little biasing network here which was enough to get up and running so uh, one in 4001 uh, power diode there um, and I varied the resistor that uh, feeds the anode through to the 13.8 volts I varied that again starting high and then coming down till I got a quiescent current of 50 milliamps per device so a total then of 100 milliamps if that makes sense it should do um, 100 milliamps uh, through the uh, the modulation transformer in a quiescent uh, condition um, and that turned out to be 1.5 uh, k ohms right uh, what else okay so on the on the output stage so that on the two collectors of those two 5643s through a uh, another transformer this one here um, its primary is center tapped uh, to allow the uh, the VCC to, to reach the two collectors. Um, here I just again just decided to throw in a, an RFC um, because my varying voltage here is at an audio rate so that's not going to block the audio but will block any potential if there was to be any um, RF from coming back up through there. Uh, another decoupling capacitor over here between that, that tap point and earth uh, as well as on the bias point over here coming on in. Right, so that modulation transformer, as I mentioned before, um, the secondary had two windings that was driven by a, a push-pull audio frequency amplifier. Um, I wired those in series um, and left the primary um, as it is. So that's the primary here, just the two big heavy conductors. Uh, one goes directly up to VCC, or the 13.8 volts fixed, and then the second here um, gets connected to the two um, RF amplifiers. Now in terms of the, the audio frequency amplifier to drive this, um, if, if my uh, understanding is correct, uh, for a say a, a 5 watt um, transmitter down here CW, um, I need to inject in terms of audio frequency power another 2.5 watts of power uh, to get up to a 100% modulation index. So in terms of the audio frequency amplifier here, I played around with a few things. Um, for a start, I had a bit of a play around with uh, one of those transistors down here that came out of the original radio. Unfortunately, um, one of the uh, the transistors was cracked when it came out, so I couldn't actually play around with a push-pull configuration. And there was only two of those on the whole radio, so I just played around with a single-ended audio uh, frequency amplifier. Uh, while it worked perfectly fine, I just couldn't get the modulation uh, index beyond um, 30 percent. So what I'd like to do in the end, um, I, I decided to use an IRF 510, so that's this sitting over here, um, and it's set up this way. So I had a, a 5 volt regulator 
across a 10k ohm trim pot and then that's coming down to the uh, the base say again the gate of that MOSFET uh, to set its bias uh, and then it's basically switching to straight DC current varying at an audio frequency rate through that um, well, I guess we'll call it the primary uh, of the modulation transformer um, this was pretty well in line with with how the radio or how the transformer came out of the the other radio so I was pretty comfortable with um, the ability to have uh, the full or very close to the full uh, VCC sitting right across those two windings there right um, so in terms of this trim pot here what I did is I fed in um, an audio frequency signal and I adjusted the um, quiescent current through there to get the, the best compromise in terms of uh, linearity with varying audio frequencies uh, and modulation depth um, and came up with quite a nice happy medium where uh, it seems to be quite linear across the audio frequency range and I'm getting that modulation depth uh, beyond 100 if I wanted to of course you don't want to so I could um, back that off through the audio um, amplitude coming in here so that while it's, a, it's not an ideal uh, driver it seems to work quite well um, so yes what else do I want to talk about that um, nothing too much so just to recap then um, that's the configuration there the audio frequency amplifier coming in just using a um, little um, AF source there from the Walkman through the amplifier um, into the the gate of the uh, RF510 which is then modulating at an audio frequency rate the current through that uh, we'll call it the primary of the modulation transformer secondary as we just talked about uh, between VCC and um, the VCC lines for both the driver and the power amp and just a very simple on the output of that uh, an 80 meter low pass filter uh, just to uh, clean up any um, any distortion if there was and to get a nice clean output so that's basically about it there so um, all in all like I say it seems to work um, quite well so I'm turn that volume back up again so yeah, so so I crank down the volume there so the modulation drops off Oh no, they didn't think that 7 was enough. And just up, Eight yeah. gives you 1.1 millimeters. Of course, the ninth decimal place gives you up to about 110 microns, yeah. right? That's not so, specific enough. Let me just do that back down again. <laughs> um, so there you have it. I'm sort of starting to ramble now, so I'm going to uh, knock it on the head. Um, but like I say, the, the, the plan now is to, to switch my attention to a, a reference um, single sideband um, radio. Uh, it was thrown up and it was, it was a good idea actually it's just in terms of a reference radio um, use some of the circuits that I've been sort of using to date um, and then gives me the ability to come back and to play around with individual stages um, in the future uh, to, to make it bigger and better um, that will start off being a uh, an 80 meter rig because that's that's where I um, hang out the most um, and we can add to it from there uh, first part I'll definitely be taking this little amplifier across here I'll be desoldering these um, the 5643 devices uh, and, and redoing that arrangement on a, on a slightly larger piece of uh, copper board um, so I can squeeze in uh, the bias and network and anything else I might need on that uh, just to make it look a bit prettier than it is um, for interest sake this bracket here on both uh, the first and the, and the second stage was the bracket that was uh, linking the stud mounted transistors there through to the case of the whole radio um, so I've just selected to use that same angle bracket and just take it through to a simple little um, heatsink which seems to work quite well so there you have it okay I'll um, say 73 oh, of course sorry I didn't actually mention it so um, I'll, I'll be looking on that reference radio for a start to utilize as many of the parts uh, that came out of that old uh, radio so we'll use the, um, the TR transformer Sagain relay um, here goes some some 2 n three five five threes, which quite well you know is a seven watt device um, with an IC of, of one amp. So I'm sure we'll be able to use those somewhere. Maybe the driver for the um, the RFPA. Um, and the other thing I was going to mention, um, there was an, an idea thrown up about using uh, a homebrew crystal filter, which I will look to use. Um, and I think I will look to use or to compare. Uh, a crystal filter using um, 
matched uh, crystals and then uh, a random bunch. So we'll see how that works out and see if, if there's much of a difference. Okay, I've talked way longer than I wanted to, so I'll say 73 and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers all.